Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest session for the LRD Fall Webinar Series. Today's session, we are going to be covering advanced search techniques, and our librarian, Kathy Meals, will be walking you through that. Just to let you know, we will have time for questions at the end, both recorded and unrecorded. But if you'd like to leave your questions in the chat throughout, I can interrupt her if it works in the moment. Uh, thank you for attending today, and this recording will be available on our YouTube page later this afternoon. So go ahead, Kathy. Wonderful. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for attending this webinar in our fall webinar series. Um, as Megan said, today's topic is advanced search techniques. So today we will cover advanced search tools in databases, within databases, tools to use within search strings, citation chaining, and Google tools. And as Megan said, there will be a question and answer period uh, at the end. Okay, so let's start with advanced search tools that you can use within databases. Um, there are many advanced tools, so I'll show you just a few. Um, searching by field codes, by publication, by document type, by language, and in multiple databases at once. I'm going to go to our library website and our A to Z resource list to open up the Academic Premier Search Premier database to show you these tools. Now, Academic Search Premier is an EBSCO database. Um, other database platforms like ProQuest might look a little bit different, um, but they all generally have the same or very similar tools. So the concepts we talk about here will translate to other platforms. Okay, so I'm on our library website and I'm going to click on the A to Z resource list, bring up our list of databases, and then Academic Search Premier, which is the second option here. Okay. So first let's look at field codes. Um, if you've done any work in the EBSCO databases before, um, you're probably familiar with these three search bars at the top of the page here. Uh, to the right of the search bars, there is a drop-down menu labeled select a field optional. If you leave it alone, um, you'll be running a keyword full text search by default. But if you're looking for materials with certain characteristics, um, such as sources by a specific author um, or a, you know, particular subject term, we'll talk about those in a little bit, um, you can select those and search within those specifically. So there are lots of options here and they might vary a little bit by database, uh, but in Academic Search Premier, this is the listing that we have here. Um, author, specific title, company information by a DUNS number um, or a ticker symbol um, and more. So let's say that I'm looking for an article where LeBron James might be the author, right? If we do a keyword search, let me just start with that. We'll do a keyword search for LeBron James and hit search. So we get a lot of articles about LeBron James. So let's say I know he's written something and I want to find that. What I can do is I can adjust the field options up here in the drop down menu next to the search uh, box and say author. So now I'm searching for materials in the database um, that have LeBron James listed as an author. Okay, so now we get the search results where LeBron is the author. Um, there's only one result here, um, but that's, that's how the author search works. And you can use multiple fields uh, in your search at once. So if I wanted to um, add something else in here, um, I could certainly do that as well. So that's field codes. Um, I'm going to click on new search in the upper left hand corner of the screen here so we can review some search options. So most searching that you do in databases can take place in the three keyword bars at the top of the page. Um, but underneath those bars, there's a lot of other search options that you can add to your keywords. And you might recognize a lot of these as filters that you can apply to your search results um, on the results page. But you can also add these filters up front um, and apply them to the results of your first search and add multiple filters at a time. So some ones that might be of particular interest, um, you might look at publication. So if you're searching for materials in a particular publication, you can limit it to that. Um, you can limit your results to document type. So if you need, for example, there's lots of different options here. If you need book reviews, you can select book reviews here. Um, you can also select by language. 
um, I think number of pages and a handful of other things too. And some databases have additional options uh, depending on the content of the database. So one example is the CNAL database, um, which is a nursing and health database. And that one allows you to limit uh, your search results to um, items where a registered nurse is listed as an author. I'll start another new search. And we'll show you how to search multiple databases at once. So right now, above the search bar, you can see that we are searching in Academic Search Premier. That tells me I'm currently searching just within Academic Search Premier. So one way of expanding your search results, uh, as well as saving time by not having to explore multiple databases in sequence, is to choose multiple databases to search at the same time. Now, this does only include databases owned by the same company, so this will include EBSCO databases. Um, you can click on the Choose Databases link, and this brings up a list of the databases, the EBSCO databases that we have. ProQuest does have a similar option. Um, in this pop-up window, you can select which databases you want to search at the same time and hover over the little note icon next to it to get a pop-up um, that has information about the database that you can look at before you select it. So we can you know, select all of them or we can select uh, selected ones and hit OK. That's a way to select uh, multiple databases to search at once. So that was advanced search tools within databases. Now I wanna move on to tools to use within your search strings when you are in the database. So there's three types of search string tools that I wanted to cover here. Wildcards, proximity searches, and nesting searches. Um, these tools give you some more power in your searches. Uh, and it's important to note that the specific means of applying the wildcards in the proximity searches so that the syntax, what's called the syntax of the search or the characters that you enter may vary a little bit from database to database. So if you're using non-EBSCO databases, make sure to check on what syntax they use. But again, the concepts remain the same across the platforms. So first we have wildcards. Um, wildcards are a way to address variations on word endings um, or spellings within words. Um, they can also hold a place for unknown characters or words within your search terms. So I have two examples here. Um, let's say if you typed gentrif with an asterisk into the search bar, but putting this asterisk at the end, you're searching for that root plus any uh, potential word ending. So that'll give you results like gentrification or gentrifying or gentrifier. So that's one option, the asterisk. You can also use the hash mark. And this is typically used for variations on spelling within a word. Um, so this can be especially useful if you're looking um, for non-American English spellings in addition. So um, color with a U versus color without a U um, or words that can be spelled multiple ways. So in this case, if we have the hash in gray, we will get G-R-A-Y or G-R-E-Y for gray. And next we have proximity searches. Um, so you probably know that using quotation marks around words and phrases when you search um, has the database give you those words as a unit right next to each other. Uh, but you can also use proximity searches to make sure that your search results um, have the words near each other and not necessarily part of the unit. So for example, you might want to find um, resources where the term gentrification appears near the term Washington, DC. So we search for gentrification and Washington, D.C., we'll have the results that have both of those terms somewhere in a resource, but searching gentrification N5 in this case, like this first bullet point under proximity searches, um, that will find the terms within a certain distance, in this case, five words um, of each other. And so example where it would, you would find something in an article like, you know, Washington, D.C. is experiencing significant gentrification. So the N for near finds terms within a certain distance of each other, other in any order. And then using a W in EBSCO databases finds the terms within a certain distance of each other. So the W is for within in this case, in the order that you entered them. So this again is how you would do it in an EBSCO database. Um, and the syntax might vary a little bit in different database, but the concepts again, the same across platforms. And third, we have nesting searches. Um, so nesting searches are used in complex searches where there's one more than one Boolean operator. That is, you're doing more than one and, or, or not. 
Um, if you remember the order of operations rules um, from math class way back when, um, you'll remember that you pay attention to what's inside the parentheses first, and then the information outside your parentheses next. So if we search for gentrification and in parentheses, Washington DC or Baltimore, the database will first look inside the parentheses to see that we're looking for materials that have either Washington DC or Baltimore in them. And then it will look outside the parentheses to see that we're looking for materials that have gentrification and either one of Washington DC or Baltimore. So that's tools within search strings, uh, wildcards, proximity searches and nesting searches. And these are things that you can use individually um, or in combination with each other. <clears throat> okay, now we have subject headings. So subject headings are a set of standardized terminology that are assigned to individual materials and databases. They're used to group materials on the same topic or topics. Um, I often use the analogy that they're like hashtags for databases. Um, just as you would use hashtags on social media to find posts on a particular topic or an event, you can use subject headings to find materials on a given topic. Now, there are two main ways to locate subject headings. Um, one is through the subject terms listing, um, sometimes also called the thesaurus, within a database, and other is through hyperlinks in individual articles. So let me go back to a database and show uh, you where uh, we can find these things. So from the main page of Academic Search Premier, you can look at this subject terms option up at the top of the page. So in the subject terms listing, you'll see this whole list of terms and options to search for them. So if I wanted to identify subject terms related to gender, um, I could put gender in the search box and browse the terms, Hit the browse button right next to the search box. Now you'll see that I have a list of all of the subject headings in the database that have the word gender in them. So if you click on any of the terms, you'll notice they're hyperlinked. So just click on gender at the top here. We have the scope. So what is included, the definition of what is included in this subject heading, um, some broader and narrower terms and related terms. Now, if you want to search the database with a subject term or subject terms that you locate in the thesaurus, you can just click on the checkbox next to the term and then add it to your search. So I'll just click on one here, and then I can use it in my search by at clicking the Add button here. What that does is it populates the search box at the top of the page, and then you can click the green search button to find materials that have this particular subject heading in them. Now you can also find subject terms in individual item records for individual articles. So let's run a search. We'll use our gentrification and Washington DC example from before. Put that in there and hit the green search button. And if we select an item, let's just click this top article right here. You'll see here the listing of subject terms that have been applied to this particular article. And they're all hyperlinked. And clicking on them will bring up other materials in the database that have been assigned the subject term as well. So in this case, I'll select cultural production. And this gives me a list of materials in the database that also have the subject cultural production, just like the article that we had before. And remember, um, back to field codes, um, you can navigate the subject terms through the subject terms listing or through these hyperlinked terms, um, but you can also use the subject headings as part of your search string using the subject term field code above. Um, this is a, the, how we found LeBron James as an author previously. So if we know the subject term cultural production, which we found here through the hyperlink, we can also type that into our search bar. And hit search. And find articles assigned that term as well. 
So those are subject headings. Now let's move on to citation chaining. Um, citation chaining is a method of research in which we can follow a particular source's citations, either backwards or forwards. Um, in backward citations, uh, we, backward citation chaining, uh, we can identify earlier materials that have been cited in a particular source. And in forward citation chaining, we can identify later materials that cite a particular source. So quick overview of how to do it. Um, for backward citation chaining, find all the bibliographic information of the materials you're interested in looking at and use that information to search for the materials. Um, you can get this information from the references list in the article, um, or in some cases from the item record in the database. So I'm going to go back to the database and our gentrification and Washington DC search. I'll run that search again. And let's take a look at this third article by Carly Chanel. I will click on the PDF full text link on the left sidebar to open up the article. If we scroll down to the end of the article, all the way down, Yeah, we will see our references list. So say you've seen a reference at some point in reviewing this article and you're interested in finding that source to read it. So let's say, let's just pick, pick the last one. Let's pick this one um, by Zukin, Gentrification, Culture and Capital in the Urban Core. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna copy and paste the title just so I have that. And then now we can go find that source. Um, I think the easiest way to do this is just to search for the title in our database, uh, the title of the article. So I've copied and pasted that title. Going to go to the library webpage and use the UDC search bar in the second box down from the top in the middle. I'll put quotation marks around it so that we find them all together and hit go. And up at the top here, we have this article from the Annual Review of Sociology. This is the article that we were looking for that was cited in the article that we found originally. Now, sometimes I'm gonna go back to the original article that we found. In some cases, there is a list of cited references um, from the article. This doesn't happen in all cases, so I wanted to show you the other way as well of searching by the title. In some cases, over on the left sidebar, there is a list of cited references. You can click on that and see all of the materials that were cited in that article. Sometimes you can even go directly to it because it's in this database. The other way that you can find articles through our database, the UDC library database, in addition to searching by the title, you can also use the search by citation feature. And you can find a particular journal article or piece of information by filling in as much information as you need to in here. Um, if you have a DOI, that's you know, especially partic particularly helpful. Um, but that's also another option um, for you to do that. So that is backward citation chaining. Um, for forward citation chaining, just as there's a few ways to locate articles through backward citation chaining, there's a few ways to chain forward. So I'm going to go to this article that we found that we had chained backwards, gentrification, culture, and capital in the urban core. Sometimes within the record in the database, there is information at the bottom under citations that says find sources citing this. 
So by clicking on this, I will search for articles that have cited this article, later articles that have gone back and cited the Zukin, this Zukin article. So I can click on that. And this list, as you can see here, contains items that are citing this article. It's not a fully complete list, uh, but it does give you quite a bit. And then you can go look at those articles individually. If you don't have that option, well, you can do, my favorite other way to do that is to go to Google Scholar. And here I'll just put the name of the article in here again and search for that. And here you can see at the bottom underneath here, we have cited by 1,121. So there's 1,121 articles listed that cite this article. So you can see it's been quite popular and probably very foundational. Um, in this area of study. So you can click on that and we'll see a vast, vast list of articles that have cited this article. Okay, so that is citation chaining. And the last thing I wanted to talk about today is some Google tools. Um, some of these are the same tools that you can use within databases, but others are unique to Google. Um, so some tools that you can use in article databases that you can also use in Google. Uh, you can use Boolean operators in Google. Um, they are case sensitive in Google, so you will have to put them all in capital letters. So and, um, you can put and in there. Google defaults to and when there are multiple words that you type into the search bar, but you can add it if you want to. Um, you can also use or, and you can use not. Um, you can either type the word not or you can use a minus sign. You can also use quotation marks around phrases and you know, particular combinations or groupings of words, um, very helpful. Uh, you can use asterisks as wildcards, again, um, proximity search in Google the way that they do that. It's a little bit different from EBSCO. You'd use around and then put the number of words you're looking um, for the uh, items to be near each other uh, in the parentheses. And you can use nested searches with more than one Boolean operator. So those all work in Google as well. And there are a couple other tools that are unique to Google. Um, one is domain search. So you can use domain search to search within those top level domains um, or in specific domains. So what I mean there is um, you can limit your search results to websites that end in .com or .edu or .gov and things like that. Or you can search for results on a particular domain like udc.edu or dc.gov. So if you're looking for resources um, from a particular kind of organization, uh, like a government organization, you can search within .gov websites. Um, or if you're looking for material on a specific website like UDCs, you can use that as well. So domain search is especially helpful when you're trying to narrow down uh, the, a particular website um, or a particular category of sites. And you can also use file type. Um, file type search finds documents of a specific type. So if you're looking for PDF files or Excel files, you can use file type to get only PDF or Excel result. So if you're trying to track down maybe a PowerPoint presentation um, or media of a certain type, this can be useful. In the syntax for these, um, for domain search, it's site colon and then either the dot the domain, the top level domain, or the site that you're looking within. So the example I have here is if we're looking for information on urban agriculture on UDC's website, we would do urban agriculture site colon udc.edu. File type, similar syntax, you'll do file type colon and then the extension of the file that you're looking for. So if we were looking for PDFs, um, turns out the Causes Extension Center has a, quite a number of recipes um, that you can use from materials that you grow in your urban garden. So if we were looking for recipes, we could do recipes on site udc.edu with a file type of PDF. And that will give us PDF files on udc.edu that have the word recipes in them. So those are a few of the Google tips um, and that ends the formal presentation. So if you have questions, um, please feel free to go ahead and uh, ask them. Thank you, Kathy, that's great. I think we forget you know, how awesome some of these tools are. 
because uh, they can really help you find some stuff. Like I had no idea LeBron James was an author. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give a minute or two for any questions to come in, but I'm not seeing any. I do want to thank everyone for attending today. And just as a reminder, this will be available on our YouTube page later this afternoon. And if you registered for this session, you will receive a direct link to that video again sometime this afternoon. Right? I'm not seeing any questions coming in. Um, so I do want to thank you for attending today.